Hello there and welcome. In this video I'm going to show you how to properly build a Scald. Now Scalds are absolutely amazing characters and can offer your party the ultimate support in the whole game. Scalds, much like Bards, can do a little bit of everything. They have average base attack bonus, so they will get a maximum of plus 15 at level 20, which is rather good. They also have spellcasting up to level 6 and access to some very unique and powerful spells like Good Hope, for example, and even have some bonus feats, meaning they are never in short of feats at all. Now, Skulls are basically a combination of the Bard and also Barbarian class. What makes them special is that, unlike the normal Bard song, their main song is called Inspire Rage, and it is very similar to the Barbarian Rage ability, except it also applies to all your party members. Not only that, but just like Barbarians, Skulls also have access to Rage Powers. Rage Powers are absolutely insane, and the best part about this is that with a Skull, they will be applied to your whole party, including pets. So let's get started on how to actually build a good Skull. Now my favorite Skull is actually the default Skull. I'm not really a fan of the Skull archetypes. A lot of them have rather useless abilities, or they lose the Barbarian Rage Powers which is basically very bad, so let us go with the default Scald. For race, I like going with human. Humans are pretty much the best race in my opinion. They have access to an extra feed, which is always amazing, and you can also get to increase any ability of choice, with a plus 2. Now your Scald background is going to be up to you, but my favorites are Shackles Corsair, because it will grant you a plus 1 bonus to scimitars, and Skulls are already proficient with Scimitars. But if you want to make a ranged Skull, preferably with throwing axes, then you definitely want the Miwongi Hunter background, because it's going to give you a plus one with throwing weapons. I actually prefer throwing weapons with Skulls. Now you can also have your Skull use bows, but I actually prefer throwing weapons, mostly because they have lower range, and because the Skull Rage and Skull Rage powers work basically in an aura centered on the Scald, it is best for your Scald to be close to your party members, so they will all get access to the Rage. So for this Scald in particular, I'm going to pick Shackles Corsair for a Scimitar focus, but later on I'll also talk about how to build a Throwing Axe Scald. Now this character in particular is a mercenary, so he won't have as high ability points as the ones you get from making your main character, for example. In the case of a scimitar based Scald, I actually like to go with dual wielding, that's because scimitars have very high threat range, so it's very easy to get critical hits with them. Even without the trickster critical feats, you will be looking at 15 to 20 critical range, which is massive. For dual wielding purposes, we will have to have a certain amount of dexterity. The last dual wielding feat requires 19 dexterity, so I like to start with something like 17. You should also leave Constitution at around 14, because it always helps to have a good amount of hit points. Wisdom isn't really needed as a Scald, you can dump it if you so desire to get more points to spend in other ability points. Now Charisma will also be needed by Scalds, but you don't need much. You basically just need enough to be able to cast your spells, so a 16. We can, however, just use Headbands to increase our Charisma, up to the point we can cast all the spells in the game, so leaving it at 12 is more than enough. Now the other ability points are up to you really. You can for example increase strength up to 14, so you get more damage during the early levels, or you can actually completely ignore strength altogether and just focus on dexterity with later getting access to mythic weapon finesse. Frankly in my case I actually like going with both strength and dexterity, Yes, I realize some people will say it's not optimal, but personally, I don't really like the fit text that comes with dexterity, meaning you will need both weapon finesse and later also mythic weapon finesse. It's also very easy to increase strength from all sorts of buffs, so frankly, I don't really notice any downsides to splitting your points between both strength and dexterity. You can list wisdom at something like 8, and then increase intelligence, up to 12, this way you'll get more skills. Now Skulls are actually great in that they have access to most of the skills in the game, 
My personal choices are for both the knowledge and also the lore skills. That's because scolds, just like bards, will add half their class level to all the knowledge and lore skill checks. So basically, they can cover all these skills for you. Now the last skill point is up to you really. You can, for example, focus on either athletics or mobility depending on what skills your other characters have access to, or just something like perception, persuasion. I like going with use magic device because it increases the support your scout can give your party by giving him access to wands and scrolls. Now for your first level feats, the selection is pretty easy. You will without a doubt want lingering performance as soon as possible because this will let your rage and also rage powers last for at least 3 rounds with just one use of your song. Ideally, before a battle, you will want to activate rage, then deactivate it right after. This will be enough to make your rage last for 3 whole rounds, which is also enough for most battles. So let us pick lingering performance first. Now for your second pick, I like going with 2 weapon fighting, as we are going to be dual wielding. Just like I said before, because we, we have both decent strength and dexterity, we don't need to pick weapon finesse, thus saving us a feat. Now a nice thing about Skulls is that they also get a spellcasting feat for free at level 1. My choice goes to Metamagic Extend spell. This will make some of our buffs last longer and will also give us spellbook flexibility because Skulls are spontaneous casters. Now your spell selection for Skulls is also simple. At early levels I like picking Grease. It is true that our Skulls won't really have high difficulty class with Grease, but Early game enemies also don't really have high saving throws, unless you're playing on unfair. And Grease is an amazing spell early game. For a second night nice spell, I like going with Cure Light Wounds, as it's going to help early game when it comes to healing our party members. Now your god selection is up to you really, I like going with Nethys. And as for alignment, Neutral Good is a pretty nice pick. Now just customize your character the way you want, and let us keep on building our character. We do it my way. I'm always ready. Now at level 2, we will already have access to a bonus called Feet. For this one, I like going with Combat Reflexes, as our Scald, just like most of my melee characters, will be focused at on generating powerful attacks of opportunity. For spells, I like going with Unbreakable Heart, because the spell will not only dispel confusion, it will also make you immune to confusion for its duration and Confusion is one of the most annoying spell effects in the game. Now for our level 3 feat peak, I like going as usual with Shake It Off to increase our Scald saving throws. On level 3, we also get access to our first Rage Power. There are two choices here I like the best, and they are going to depend on how your party is made at this level. The first one would be Lethal Stance, that will further increase your melee attack rolls and also thrown weapon attack rolls, with a competence boost that will scale. Now this is one of the reasons calls are so good, they will not only increase your attack bonus from their inspired rage ability, but also from their rage power such as little stance. Another good rage power choice for this level would be Beast Totem Lesser. This ability will grant your entire party, pets included, two claw attacks. If you are using a build focused on natural attacks, then this is the one you should pick first. The same for a build that has access to many pets at low levels. Pets like the dog and the wolf, for example, will be able to have 3 whole attacks at level 1 with just Beast Totem. Let us go with Lethal Stance for now. Now we have another level 1 spell pick. A good one for me is Remove Fear. Because calls are spontaneous casters, you will always have access to Remove Fear, but you can also leave this to scrolls, it's up to you really. Now at level 4 we get our first ability point increase. In this case, I like going with dexterity up to 19. That's because, just like I said before, with 19 dexterity, we will have access to the last dual wielding feats later on. Now at level 4 we also have our first level 2 spell picks. You will definitely want Blur, one of the most powerful defensive spells in the whole game. It has great duration and will basically make all of the enemy's melee attacks miss your characters with a 20% chance, even if they manage to beat their armor class. A second great pick is without a doubt Heroism, another very powerful buff, that lasts pretty much for the whole dungeon. 
Now at level 5 we have another feat choice. For this level I actually like going with extra rage power and then picking Beast Totem Lesser. That's because at next level we will be able to get the improved version of Beast Totem. Now for another level 2 spell, you certainly want to pick Mirror Image, another very powerful defensive buff. As you might have noticed, our Scald won't really have much armor class, but you can make up for this with all the defensive buffs that we will have, such as Mirror Image, Blur, Displacement, Greater Invisibility, and so on. It is also important to have your Scald attack while enlarged with the Enlarged Person spell because that will give him reach. A character with reach will attack a little far away from the enemy, so the enemy will often not focus on him. Just like I said before, level 6 means another rage power. In this case, we want Beast Totem. Beast Totem will actually grant you a stacking bonus to natural armor class that scales with Scald levels. The greatest part about this is that it hits your whole party and we also stack with, for example, Bark Skin or Amulets of Natural Armor class. For another level 2 spell, I recommend you pick Sense Vitals, a very powerful self buff that will actually give your Scald up to plus 5 d6 sneak attack, even if they don't have any sneak attack dice. At level 7 we have another feat, and what we want is without a doubt outflank because of how powerful this is when it comes to attacks of opportunity. We have even another feat at level 7 thanks to our Scald bonus feat. For this one in particular I like to pick Seize the Moment, once again to enhance our attacks of opportunity. Most of the level 1 picks we have now aren't really going to make much of a difference, but you can go with something like Vanish for example, to give your Scald access to a cheap invisibility. Level 7 is really huge and we also have our first level 3 spell choice. The spells we want are an absolute given. For starters, Good Hope, which is basically a, a mass version of Heroism that also increases party damage by a plus 2, very powerful. And of course, Haste. At level 8, we'll increase the Dexterity again, but starting from now, we'll begin to increase our Strength. For another level 3 spell, I recommend going with Displacement, because of how powerful 50% Concealment can be. For our level 9 feat, go with Improved to Weapon Fighting. Now we also get another Rage Power, in this case I recommend you pick Animal Fury. Animal Fury is going to give your whole party, pets included, a bite attack. What's so good about bite attacks is that they will stack with all other bite attacks your character has. And it is, at the very least, one extra attack for your whole party. Another level 3 spell. And this choice is up to you, really. You can pick something like Remove Curse to always have access to this spell. Feather Step Mass to protect your party against difficult terrain and even the Lay Poison Communal if you don't have another character capable of casting it. I like going with Feather Step Mess. For another level 2 spell, go with Rage. This will actually stack with Scald Rage and can increase your whole party's strength and constitution by a plus 2 morale, a very unique buff. Now we get our first level 4 spells. I suggest you go first with Echolocation, because this basically lets you hit enemies with concealment, regardless of needing true scene or blind fight. Also, greater invisibility is another good choice, because just like displacement, it gives you a 50% concealment against melee attacks. Your level 11 feat is a given, in this case, improved critical scimitar. With just this feat, our scimitars will have 15-20 critical range, which is huge. This other level 1 spell can be anything really. Let's go with Hideous Letter for fun. Now for your other level 4 spell, I recommend you go with either Dimension Door or Freedom of Movement. Freedom of Movement is overall a better choice. Now just like I said before, starting from level 12, we will begin increasing our strength. Level 12 also means another Rage Power. In this case, what you want is the greater version of Beast Totem. This will give all our characters the Pounce special ability. What makes Pounce so good is that it lets you charge and also unleash your full attacks at the enemy. By default, charge only really lets you charge, so you lose on your attacks. 
but with Greater Beast Totem you can both charge and attack all in the same action in the same round. Just look at this, we have another feat, that's why skulls are so good, they get so much nice stuff. For this one I like to go with Weapon Focus Scimitar. Now for a last level 4 spell pick, go with Dimension Door. This is especially useful in chapter 4, when moving through the city, and there are some areas there, usually rooftops, that you can only access with Dimension Door. At level 13 we have another feat. We already got some of the best melee feats really. And it's up to you what you want to get next. You can give your Scald Power Attack for example, the Vital Strike line of feats, and so on. I like going with Double Slice because it's going to increase the damage we do with our offhand scimitar. You can also pick for example, Dazzling Display and Shatter Defenses. Another level 3 spell. I'll pick Remove Curse. Now we also get our first level 5 spells. My favorites are without a doubt Heroism Greater because of how powerful it is, and also Greater the Spell Magic. At level 14 we get yet another level 2 spell. I'll pick Cure Moderate Wounds for example. Another level 5 spell. In this case I'll go with Cure Light Wounds Mass, just for more healing. Now level 15 is easy, we'll get greater to weapon fighting. As for our rage power, you want deadly accuracy. It basically increases your chances of confirming your critical hit, but the main point is to get it because it is a prerequisite for lethal accuracy, which we will soon get. Another level 5 spell, you can pick anything really, I'll go with joyful rapture. Like I said before, we'll keep increasing strength now. At level 16 we get another level 4 spell. The other spells aren't really anything special now, so I'll go with Cure Critical Wounds. Now we also have our first level 6 spell picks. Honestly, the spells aren't really good. I like going with Mass Cat's Grace because a lot of casters don't have access to this animal buff. And also Eye Bite. Alright, so level 17 means another feat. Now for this case I like picking extra rage power, so we can get early access to lethal accuracy. This rage power is absolutely insane, it is going to increase the critical multiplier of your whole party by 1. This means that with access to improved critical mythic, we will be able to get at the very least a times 4 multiplier for our scimitars, resulting in huge damage. Now we have even more feats, but honestly at this point the choice is up to you. But just like I said before, you can pick whatever you want, depending on what you want to focus your scald in. I'll keep it simple and go with improve as initiative. Another level 3 spell. Let's just go with cure serious wounds. Another level 6 spell, just like I said the spells now are mostly useless. Let's go with cure wounds mess. Now we have access at level 18 to our last rage power. I like going with Fearless Rage because it's going to make our whole party immune to fear. This level 6 spell pick can be anything really. Level 19 means our last feat. I'll go with extra rage power, increase the damage reduction to increase the DR of our whole party. But once again, it's up to you what you pick at this level. The most important feats are basically the ones you pick up to level 11. After that, it is a free for all. This level 5 spell pick can be anything once again. And at last we are at level 20. We only get a few spells, which just like I said before can be anything. And last but not least, we also get our capstone. The Master Scald ability. This is actually pretty huge. First it's going to remove the penalty our rage gives to our armor class. And it's also going to make it so our allies can use any ability even under rage. That's because by default 
Whenever an ally is under a rage effect, they cannot, for example, cast spells. It's even going to haste our whole party, so overall it's a very powerful capstone. Alright, now let us talk about Mythic Progression for your Scald. For a Scald, I actually like going with Abundant Casting, because of how useful your level 2 and 3 spells are, mostly the defensive ones, like Blur and Mirror Image, and also Haste. If you are playing on Unfair, then I suggest you go with less than first. For our level 2 Mythic, I'm going with Mythic 2 Weapon Fighting to reduce the penalty of our dual wielding scimitars. For your level 3 Mythic, go with either Ever Ready to increase the power of our attacks of opportunity or less stand. In this case, I'll pick less stand because of how powerful it is. Now your fourth mythic ability should be a feat, in this case Improved Critical Scimitar. By mythic level 5 you will want the ever ready mythic ability. For mythic rank 6 I like going with Improved Initiative Mythic. Alright, now at mythic level 7 there are a few choices you can pick. For example, if you like to use charge, you can go with mythic charge. Because our whole party will have access to the Pounce ability, Charge is actually very useful to us. But I know that some players don't really like Charge, because of how annoying it can be to set it up in certain cases, where you are for example blocked by obstacles. You can also go with, with something like Leading Strike, depending on how many other characters in your party already have this mythic ability, or even the Enduring and Greater Enduring spells line, if you want your buffs to last 24 hours. But I find that in the case of Scald, with Abundant Casting, they have enough casting of the most important buffs. I'll pick Mythic Charge for now. I actually love using Charge and find it to be one of the best abilities in the whole game, especially when you charge out of battle. And with Pounce, it is just great. Now we are at Mythic level 8. You can go with something like Weapon Focus Mythic or just Flawless Attacks. I like going with Weapon Focus Mythic. Alright, so now we are at mythic level 9, which is for all intents and purposes our last mythic rank. You can for example pick Archmage Armor and use either scrolls or potions of Mage Armor on your Scald to get a very high amount of armor class. You can even pick something like Always a Chance to avoid auto misses on a 1, or even something like Unrelenting Assault to increase our damage. I'll go with Unrelenting Assault. But once again remember that at this point, the choices are really up to you. As usual, you can change the order of some of these mythic abilities and feats. For example, if you don't have anyone in your party capable of getting Inspirational Leader, then you can leave it for your Scald. The same for Leading Strike. Alright, so now I'm going to talk about something that a lot of people have been requesting. In this case, how to build a Scald Trickster. Now this is the build that I use for my main trickster character that you probably have seen on my unfair videos. Honestly, fit-wise the build is not really different from the generic Scald Mercenary build that I just talked about. The most important fit difference in this case would be the trickster specific critical feats. In this case, Improved Improved Critical, yet another Improved Critical, and the last Improved Critical, all these feats can only be achieved by Trickster with the aid. With the aid of the Perception 2 Mythic Trick. You should definitely get this trick as soon as possible, in this case at Mythic Rank 4. Another unique part about this Trickster build is that we are going to get the Use Magic Device 3 Mythic Trick. With access to this greater Mythic Trick, our Scald will have not only a Scald Spellbook, the Trickster spellbook, but also a full wizard spellbook. So we will be able to get more powerful buffs, such as for example the genie kind buff. Ideally you want to have at least two of these cast on your Scald at all times, so that he gets access to different elemental attacks on his scimitars. With these different elemental attacks we will be able to benefit from the elemental barrage mythic ability. This ability is insane and is capable of adding an absurd amount of damage so long as your weapon has access to at least two different elemental enchantments. Now because of the trickster special feats, we will be able to get times 5 critical multiplier and also 11 to 20 critical range. 
Another special thing about this build is that when you have access to the Knowledge World 3 Mythic Trick, you will be able to get any feat without their prerequisites. So for example, in this case, my Skull started at level 1 with the Weapon Specialization Scimitar feat, a feat that is usually only available to fighters. By having this feat, we can also get the Mythic Weapon Specialization feat, thus adding quite a lot of extra damage to our scimitars. Now, there is indeed some more unique stuff to the Trickster Mythic Path that I am going to leave for a video that will be fully focused on Trickster. So now we have, at last, our level 20 Scald Mercenary. With around 9 attacks from his dual wielding scimitars, another one from a bite, and capable of giving our whole party members a great amount of support. As always, thank you for watching this video and I hope it proves useful to you. Please remember to like and subscribe to help the channel. See you next time!